Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Randy Couture to defeat Lyoto Machida. That karate shit is not going to work on the natural. And I'm here to talk about Veronica Hardy versus Jamie Lynn Horth. Jamie Lynn Horth is 33 years old, 6-0 and as a pro, and she's got 3 inches of height and 3 inches of reach over 28-year-old Hardy, who is 7-4-1 and as a pro. And Veronica Hardy, of course, was formerly Veronica Macedo before she broke my heart by marrying that son of a bitch. Best of luck to the young couple. But Veronica, she is a very good fighter, much better than her 7-4-1 record would indicate. Not that that's even a horrible record, but I think the world of her, technically. And it's important to mention that all four of her losses come in the UFC, just for a little context there. But... Technically, she's great everywhere. I still don't know if she's better on the feet or on the ground, uh, but I think she can match any fighter she's put in there with for at least a round, and she can do it anywhere. But generally, how she's lost is physicality. That's been the primary difference maker in her four losses, all of which, again, come in the UFC, which is important context here where she's fighting a 6-0 and fighter who's only been in the UFC for one fight. But uh, Veronica, she's been defeated once by TKO. That was to Ashley Evan Smith in her debut up at bantamweight. Veronica Hardy should be at Adam weight rather than bantamweight. But she was up at bantamweight, and Ashley Evan Smith, she may not be great technically, but she's big, strong, and physical. And she was able to bully around Veronica Hardy down the stretch and get her out of there. The one submission loss comes to Jillian Robertson. Jillian is the female Jeremy Horn. And she is uh, one of the few girls that I think could go through Veronica Hardy in that fashion. And the two decision losses are to Bea Malecki and Andrea Lee. Both of which were physicality. That was the difference maker. The Bea Malecki fight was close. Kind of closer. But uh, still, and I think that was at Batum, uh, Bantamweight. But... Bea did, uh, I think, get the better of her, just that Veronica was still in that at the end. But the Andrea Lee fight was uh, more of a uh, dominant performance from uh, Andrea Lee. That was a lot more grappling, even though both girls mounted her. But um, Andrea Lee and Bea Malecki were just able to win with physicality and leverage. You know, scrambling for top position, they outscramble her. Scramble, you know, fighting for a takedown in the middle of the octagon, and Veronica's the one with no leverage. So it's been the difference maker, and I expect it to be the difference maker moving forward. She has had a long layoff in the middle of her career, and I believe she took some time off due to concussion issues. I've never seen her knocked out, but doesn't mean she can't have issues. And I believe she pulled out of a fight a few years ago due to headaches, I read. Uh, she had headaches, and the fight was pulled. That might have been against Amanda Lemos. And if that's the case, then a good call. But uh, either way, it's just another little wrinkle to one's durability. And it's something there with uh, Veronica Hardy. Jamie Lynn Horth, she is good everywhere. But I'd say she's at a technical disadvantage everywhere against Veronica Hardy. I trust Veronica more everywhere. But Jamie Lynn Horth is a versatile fighter. And down the stretch in rounds two and three, I trust Jamie Lynn Horth everywhere over Veronica Hardy. I think um, if Jamie Lynn Horth is able to impose herself and really just to speak plainly, to get on top of Veronica Hardy for uh, any sustainable period of time and uh, take some of the wind out of her sails, I think Jamie Lynn Horth wins this fight and has a good chance of putting her away down the stretch. Jamie Lynn Horth... She is 6-0, and five finishes, just one decision. Of course, it does come at the UFC level against Haley Cowan, her one UFC fight. And that was one where I thought she was better down the stretch over Haley Cowan. But Haley Cowan, her really only strength is physicality and athleticism. She seems like she's good everywhere, but she's nowhere near as good technically as someone like Veronica Hardy. But she's physical. And hey, uh, Jamie Lynn Horth was still kind of able to tame her and then took over technically down the stretch and uh, was able to outpoint her, smashing her with body kicks at third round. But aside from that, her five uh, professional wins before that 
are all finishes and not one of them comes in round one. There's two submissions, I believe, or yeah, two submissions, three TKOs, one of them being a body kick, but all of them come in rounds two or three, which is extra impressive for a fighter with a 6-0 and record. Usually it looks like Zachary Reese, who I'll be talking about soon. He's fighting Cody Brundage. I think he has a 6-0 and record, and he hasn't been past round one. Uh, I think most of them are very quick, but... Uh, Jamie Lynn Horth has the opposite. Oh, you know, and it's not like she's been tested by the best fighters, but she's beaten some good fighters. Uh, the girl she beat, uh, Myra Contuera. That's the girl she beat for the LFA championship round three. She beat, uh, that girl, Corinne Laflamboise, another Canadian there, but the girl's underrated. Uh, she didn't have the best record at the time of the fight, but since then she's gone on to, uh, uh, have like a five and one or five and two record with, uh, Manon Fior being the last girl to beat her, I believe. Uh, Jamie Lynn Horth also beat one of the girls to beat uh, Corinne Lafonblaise, uh, Jade Masson Wong. That was the girl she body kicked in round three. Uh, this girl, she may not have fought the best competition, but she's fought some good fighters, and she's outlasted them and taken over down the stretch. And in the Corinne fight, she had to deal with a good amount of adversity. That's where I've seen some knocks against her. She's, she was knocked down in that fight, she was uh, smothered and pressured for a good amount of that fight. Had a lot of trouble dealing with her, but she still came back and tamed her and ended up that was one of her two submission wins, getting her out of there in round three with a rear naked choke. This girl, once she settles on top, she's very good. And even if she can't settle on top, her striking comes alive down the stretch. Uh, she, you know, she proved that again uh, against Haley Cowan. Her best two wins, though, are amateur wins. Against Lupi Godinez. I think she's 3-0 and as an amateur, but the two of, two of the three wins are decisions against Lupi. Might be nine-minute fights, but there's still wins over a very good fighter who wasn't that great at the time, probably. But still, you know, those are good names on the record. And I wasn't able to see those fights, even though I tried. But here I think it's a very close matchup. Uh... Because Veronica Hardy, I expect to be better on the outside and to have a lot more tricks up her sleeve. But I'm going with Jamie Lynn Horth. I think Jamie Lynn Horth won't get finished. Uh, you know, she, I think the best chance of Veronica Hardy securing a finish would be a submission. But I think Jamie Lynn Horth is able to deal with the technical disadvantage in round one and then take over in rounds two and three. And I will be playing, I have played her money line and I will be playing her rounds two and three props. Uh, I couldn't tell you if it'd be more likely to be a TKO or a submission, but I think the girl comes alive down the stretch and she's got some good skills. On the feed, I expect her to be, again, at a technical disadvantage, but she is a good striker and she's more powerful. And Veronica Hardy does have some of those issues that I mentioned. So uh, I'm not saying she's going to get knocked out because she's got concussion issues, but the fact that they're even more aware of that, her and her husband, who I know, you know, nobody knows fighting better than Dan Hardy... They'll, they'll be inclined to protect her, so it leaves room for a finish in that regard. But I also think if this fight becomes a ground fight and Jamie Lynn Horth is alive in round two, she's going to be on top, she's going to be sucking the life out of Veronica Hardy, and she might be advancing. The girl, uh, she's a well-rounded fighter inclined to go to the mount. I think that's her, uh, you know, at least at the regional level when she's fought girls that didn't have the physicality of Haley Cowan. That's how it's ended up for her. And here, while Veronica Hardy is better technically than anybody she's fought, including Haley Cowan, she has even weaker physicality than some of the girls she's beaten on the regional scene. So I'm taking Jamie Lynn Horth. I'm taking her to win. I'll go with a round three finish. Maybe a decision. I don't know. But I'll be playing uh, rounds two and three finish. And wouldn't surprise me if she won a decision. But if she does that, mark my words... Round one is close, or she gets outclassed even, but then she wins rounds two and three. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.